Good morning. Christ has risen. Let us rejoice and celebrate. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in LaGrange, Indiana for our digital Easter worship service. Here are your announcements for today. We would like to invite you to a Zoom Bible study. This online Bible study will begin Sunday, April 19th at 9 p.m. The study will be on the pastoral epistles, which will be 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. This is a great opportunity to learn about three fairly small books of the Bible that have had a huge impact on Christian thought and understanding for over 1,500 years. If you're interested in this study, I invite you to contact me, Pastor Chris, at the email, which is on your screen now. Due to the building being closed, we have three activities that we're scheduled to meet later in April that will not be meeting at this time. The first one is the all church cleanup that was scheduled for April 25th has been canceled. The Nicaragua brunch, which was um, a brunch to support our mission team that is hopefully heading to Nicaragua in June has been canceled. The child protection policy meeting that was scheduled for next week has also been canceled. As you notice behind me, the Easter flowers have been delivered. If you ordered an Easter flower and wish to pick it up, you may do so here at the church anytime Monday through Thursday between the hours of 8 a.m. and noon. If you have any questions, I invite you to call Anita at the church office. Once again, welcome. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in LaGrange, Indiana's digital Easter worship service. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. It is a great day to celebrate, even if we can't be here together in person. Here at First United Methodist Church, it is our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we do that by living out our vision of being active followers of Jesus Christ, reaching out and sharing God's hope and love with families and those in need. Even though we can't be together today in person, it is still a time of joy and celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, who defeated death and who has come to save us all. Let us begin our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God of light, we hid in the darkness and you brought the light of salvation to our eyes and our spirit. We praise you for the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have received the great good, good news of healing, hope, and restoration. Praise be to you, eternal God, for this gift of love. Amen.
as we enter into our uh, prayer time, we're going to uh, participate in a different, a little bit different prayer uh, today. Um, one that is more of an intercessory prayer. This prayer um, is adapted from a prayer written by a lady by the name of Gail Ramshaw. And I believe it is a prayer that sums up perfectly um, the situation and the life that we are in today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but grieve the idea that we all can't be together in person. So what I invite us to do now is that we will spend a moment in silent prayer, and then I will lead us in a pastoral prayer, that intercessory prayer that I spoke of a moment ago. And then we will join together at the end uh, with one voice, even, even though we are spread out, in the Lord's Prayer. Let us now go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Easter day, marked by both sorrow and joy, our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need include both heartfelt lament and fervent praise. God, our sanctuary, we lament that we not, cannot gather today for public worship, that death stalks the church, and that our sorrows and fears blunt our songs of alleluia. And yet around the globe, we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave for our baptismal washing in his life, for your presence come to us in the word, and for the hope the gospel brings. God, our creator, we lament that our lifestyles have harmed your creation and that our efforts to repair your earth are now postponed. Yet here, we praise you for the beauty of the natural world, for springtime flowers and budding trees, for the soil and rain that nourish the crops. God, our governor, we lament that war and violence still rage, that countless people suffer injustice, and that the plight of refugees seem beyond solution, that appropriate action is delayed and inadequate. Yet we praise you that there is peace on our streets, that elected officials and aid agencies are devoting themselves to save the people and to share our food, and that we are given connection to friends and family through technology. God, our physician, we lament all who suffer, those
those we name here before you today. But especially we lament the coronavirus and its incalculable suffering, the many thousands sick, the fear instilled, the loss of employment, the cancellation of plans, the overflow in hospitals, the scarcity of supplies, the exhaustion of medical staff. And yet we praise you for health and well-being wherever it thrives, for the dedication of those medical workers, for the goodwill of volunteers, for the generosity of benefactors, and for the comfort we receive from the, from the power of the resurrection. God, our everlasting arms, mother us in our heartache and distress. Receive us now our personal laments and help each of us to praise your name. And yet here, we join in our alleluias, and we praise you on this Easter day for your promise of an endless banquet of joyous life in your presence, when diseases and sorrow will be no more. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who are the source of life, word of salvation, and power of mercy, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray as we join together in the prayer your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came and followed him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Ravoni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her.
Let us pray. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Be in us, be through us, be around us. Fill us with your peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and glorifying to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As many of you might know, when I was in college, I worked at a golf course in the maintenance department. One of my main tasks at the golf course was mowing the greens six mornings a week. Most days I would be at the golf course just as the sun was coming up, but there were some times when I had to get to the course well before daylight in order to get started before a big tournament or an event. I would literally be mowing for about an hour in the dark. Now, before you think I couldn't see, I did have a light attached to my mower that gave me plenty of light to see where I was going. They would have not appreciated me mowing the greens without a light. But that hour or so before the sun started to make its presence known was always a surreal time. It was generally very quiet outside, outside the hum of my mower. The world hadn't quite woken up yet. The birds were still sleeping. The raccoons, the owls, the other night creatures were just starting to head back into the woods to sleep. And the deer hadn't quite started to venture out of the woods. It also felt as if the sun would never come up, that it would stay dark forever. There's a kind of uncertainty in the darkness before the sun comes up. Your vision is limited. You don't know what's around the corner. It's an eerie feeling. Before I knew it, however, the sun was up, the light on my mower became useless, and the world felt alive once more. One of the challenges of preaching an Easter sermon is that we think there's only so many ways you can tell the resurrection story. But as I was reading and studying our gospel passage from John this week, I was drawn to something that I had noticed previously, but until this age of pandemic, I hadn't thought of it quite like this before. John tells us that Mary Magdalene arrived at the tomb very early in the morning. So early, in fact, that it was dark. And it was in the darkness of all things that Mary discovers that the stone had been removed from the tomb entrance. Mary didn't realize it at that point. It wasn't until later that she became the first to see Jesus alive. But sometime in the darkness, Jesus was raised from the dead. Sometime in the darkness and the stillness of the night, Jesus came back to life. The resurrection doesn't happen in the light. It happens in the darkness. Jesus didn't raise from the dead in the broad daylight when the world would have surely noticed something was afoot. It happened in the quiet and uncertainty of the darkness. There's something that struck me about the reminder that the resurrection happened in the darkness. Even in the midst of the darkness and uncertainty that comes with it, life is there. There are, these are such strange and unusual times that it can feel so overwhelming and dark. But just because we are physically separated and unable to be together in our wonderful sanctuary with our gorgeous pipe organ and our wonderful choir and our beautiful Easter flowers doesn't mean we can't be together in this virtual space to celebrate the resurrected Christ. Just because we aren't worshiping in person this morning does it mean that Jesus stays in the tomb? Yet it's hard not to be together in person to worship on the one of the most important days in the Christian life. It's hard not to stand as the body of Christ, elbow to elbow, singing as loud as we can our favorite Easter hymns. There's a communal grief on Easter this year that we normally don't even consider in years past. We are not immune to this virus, and we've all been impacted by this virus in both big ways and small ways. Even though we proclaim that Christ is the Lord is risen today, even though we are a people of the resurrection. 
Several years back, in response to another unrelated tragedy, Bishop Mike Coiner wrote a commentary on, on this type of idea. Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, has defeated the forces of wickedness, has defeated the forces of darkness and death. But that doesn't mean that bad things won't or don't continue to happen. That doesn't mean the senseless violence and death will stop. It means that death will not win in the end. Being people of the resurrection doesn't mean there will be no more darkness. It means that the darkness will not last forever. Everything changed on Easter morning. Everything. When Mary Magdalene encounters Jesus at the entrance to the tomb, the darkness lost its grip on the world and light burst forth through the pain and grief. Now, that doesn't mean that the darkness doesn't continue to put up a fight. We know that. The new reality with COVID-19 is proof that the darkness knows how to fight. But with the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, the power of death no longer controls us. The power of cynicism and despair no longer determine our value as beloved children of God. The power of violence and corruption are sent back to the hell from which they came. Joy and peace reign supreme. Life prevails over death, even when the world is in the midst of a life-altering, world-changing pandemic. Honestly, I have no idea how any of this will end. I don't know when it will end, how long we will have to remain apart, how many lives this virus will ultimately take from us, when we will ultimately get back to some semblance of normal. But I do know, without a hesitation in my heart, that God is with us, that Christ has risen from the dead, and no matter what happens, nothing will be able to separate us from those two facts. Now it is our task to go out into the world, out into the pain and the difficulties that are in our lives and around us to proclaim the simple but powerful message that Christ is alive. Shortly after we were ordered to stay home by our governor, Maddie, our daughter, worked on a project in one of the worship bags that Chris Dickinson has faithfully sent through the mail to help our kids worship at home. She colored the project and then Pastor Andrea taped it up on the window in the front room of the house facing out towards the street. It wasn't until later that day did I see the message of that project. It was simple. He lives. What a great reminder to us and to our community that even in the midst of the chaos and upheaval that Jesus lives that there is good news in the midst of it all. And even though we can't join together in person to shout it from the rooftops, we can still shout it from wherever we are. And there can still be joy in the midst of everything else. The resurrection of Jesus Christ cannot be contained. Not by social distancing, not by the government stay-at-home orders, not by a pandemic. The resurrection happens whether we are meeting together in person or not, and this undeniable fact should fill us with such awe and excitement that we can't help but take this good news out to the rest of the world. So go out on this Easter day, living like Easter day means everything, having the courage to proclaim life over death, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and life has been given to us anew. Go tell them, whether by note, by Facebook post, by email, by yelling it out your front door of your house, go tell them. Go tell them the good news. In the midst of the darkness of our world. Proclaim that life rules over death. Go tell that Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ lives today. Alleluia. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Go now into the world to proclaim that fact with every fiber of your being. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.